Hello there! This is the intro to photography video. You're going to be able to use this video all throughout our semester. So I will put in uh, sort of chapters where you can fast forward to a certain section that you might need uh, to access. Okay, so for photography in our art classroom, we might be utilizing um, maybe one of three different kinds of photography. We might be taking photos of our artwork, and I want you to take really good photos of your artwork because those we will be putting on our um, digital gallery. We could be taking photos for our artwork. So um, if we're doing a digital collage, you might be taking some photos uh, to put in that collage and work with. And then finally, we might be uh, creating a photo for and a piece of art and um, it would stand alone on its on its own so I really want to tell you how to take a really good photo and this you can use all throughout your lifetime so let's begin with how to take a photo with the iPad so for most of us already know how to take a photo <laughs> I don't think that that's something that I have to teach you. But um, again, you're going to go to your camera app and I'll be showing you the, a screenshot of this as well. Uh, but the, what, what we often do is sometimes I see people holding the um, iPad at different angles. And what we really want to focus on is stability so that we can get a really well focused, in focus, clear photo. So to do that, what you do is you use your body and you keep your arms uh, close to your body. That stabilizes the camera. And then you're going to, I'm going to use this potted plant here or this orchid, um, come in. I want to, I don't want to take a photo from really far away. I want to come in and get the whole image in my piece. And then I'm holding it, you see, with both hands. It's close to my body. And then I'm going to take that photo. Okay. I, you can always see that there's a little box on there and that can help you focus on your item. The other thing you're going to want to do is always check back and look at that photo right away to make sure that it's, that's it, it's clear. Next thing is if you, um, are getting at a weird angle or something, you can't keep your, uh, your camera right by your body you can also utilize a table or something close to you um, a stairway rail whatever you can find to help you stabilize that camera the more stable you'll be the more in focus your your uh, pictures will be I want to tell you about your point of view project. This is the first introductory uh, project that we're going to do for photography in this classroom. It's really trying to get you to think of seeing things from different angles. So you're going to go around and take images of an object in three different points of view. You'll take one from a bird's eye point of view. A bird's eye would be something from above. So. Again, I'm gonna practice those good stability things. So I might try to get higher than my object. Now, if you're in the classroom, you can simply put it on the ground and then you're automatically higher. But since I'm trying to do this for you on my camera, I'm gonna stand on a chair. Okay, so now I still have my, my iPad close to my body I'm coming in close. I'm going to focus with that little box and then I'm going to take that picture from that bird's eye point of view. Second is to take a photo at somebody's eye level. So that could be um, if your subject is alive right at their eye level. Since this is a uh, potted plant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down directly at the same level as the plant and then take that photo. You can see that I'm getting nice and close in. Now I'm gonna turn the camera here because the next one's gonna be a little strange. This one is a worm's view. 
So I'm gonna try to actually get underneath at an angle below this potted plant. So I'm thinking that I am a worm and I'm looking up at this plant. Okay, so now I have three different photos in three different views. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep those on my camera roll for now, and then I'm gonna go choose maybe a different object and do this again until I have maybe three different subject matters. Subject matter is what you're taking a picture of. Or in other artworks, it's what you're uh, doing your artwork about. Once I have those nine photos, maybe even more because I might have taken them from different angles while I'm above it, different angles while I'm at the eye level, and different angles when I'm at the worm's eye view, then I'm gonna choose the best ones and I'm gonna start to edit. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, our next step is getting ready to edit. Your first thing that I want you to do every single time is to make a duplicate of the, the favorite image that you're going to be editing. So for this assignment, you're gonna end up with three images. So you might've started with nine, you might've started with 18, but we're, built, we're bringing it down editing, which means making some choices on what we're keeping and what we're getting rid of um, making some choices on the light and the color of our images. But um, for right now, I'm choosing my best images that I know that I can work with. So you'll need three. I have our bird's eye view. I have two of those. And I, hmm, I kind of like this, but it's not as in focus as this one and the the background is a little bit emptier in this. So I might, I don't know, this one's a hard one because I also kind of like some of these things. I think I might choose this one even though um, some of the flowers here are a little uh, too bright. I think I can fix that in my editing process. So this first one here, I'm just gonna get rid of. So I've got my bird's eye view I've got my straight on eye level view, and then um, I've got my worm's eye view from under underneath. What I wanna do first is make a duplicate of all three of those because I want you to be able to show me, your teacher, um, the growth that you are making in your editing. So to, to see that for, for evidence, I need to see where you're starting from. So let's use this worm's eye view. You're gonna select the photo, click the share button, but instead on the menu, you're gonna hit duplicate. And then you're gonna, if you chose a live image, duplicate as a still photo. That's all you need to do. All right, so Snapseed is an application that you can use for editing. You're going to click open in the top left and then open from your device so you can see the images that you've just taken. You'll see two images because you've already duplicated that image. Once you've got it selected, you can see on the right-hand side, there are several options. The middle option with the pencil gives you the menu with the editing options. Here I'm starting with a crop. So you really want to kind of play around with what do you want to keep and what do you want to get rid of. For an example here, if I had something that had like those little no that little notepad and maybe that piece of paper up here, I think I'd want to get rid of that right away. Um, here too, I have kind of the edge of this uh, curtain that I don't really love the look of. And I kind of want more of just the orchid. So see now how I have the potted plant in this bottom section. There is something called the rule of thirds. And we want to kind of keep our um, photos in sync with using uh, the nine boxes that we're given. So 
here I'm going to keep this visually interesting by by having our bird's eye view from the top here and then it kind of arcs over up into that top third. I think that's a little bit more interesting than what I had before. So when I do um, finish something and I want to keep it, I hit the check mark. If I didn't like it, then what I would do is hit the X. Of course, I can always undo up here, um, revert things look at all my edits. Um, Snapseed is a really great program. So then here, I'm gonna have you um, try out at least the white balance and the tonal contrast and um, vignetting. I also love lens blur. Those are ones that are my go-to, but you can try any of these things. I'm gonna walk you through just a really quick way of what I would normally do. Checking on white balance, you can use this as your menu. It can change the temperature or tint, whatever you select. And in Snapseed, the way that you are gonna um, change things is the gesture of moving your finger back and forth. So you'll see there's a little notch up here if I go this way, it's bringing my temperature to a cooler tone. I'm keeping my finger on the screen. Or if I go this direction, I'm getting a warmer temperature. So you can see there, um, I think I'm gonna lean more towards the warm section. Again, if I want to keep it, I hit the uh, check mark. If I want to add, not use it, I would hit the X. That I like to use, um, again are these vignettes. So the vignette is so cool because I can actually move this little blue circle over um, and change the vignetting however I'd like. I'm going to try to have my blue circle be the center on this orchid here and then it's going to darken in as I use my finger. I can this kind of creates a haze around everything or if I go this way, it, it darkens in everything else. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't like how overexposed or how white these pieces are. So I'm gonna move that over, that little circle over here and see if I can, oh, do you see how that changed the orchids? It really, because the vignette is already so dark, it gave it a little bit more detail. That's really cool. So I'm going to keep it that way. I'm liking that. Into my Google Slides and put together a point of view image so that I can show you the original version and the edited version. You're going to create three different slides with a title here that says point of view in your name. And then you'll have the uh, eye level, the bird's eye view, and the worm's view. And then you'll be turning in that slideshow along with your reflection uh, into our Google Classroom. And that is your project. As always, let me know if you have any questions.